Since the first game, Rasputin has jumped into the minds of others and made alterations without a second thought. He never paused to reflect on what he was doing. Even after unleashing an arsonist from the psyche of Boyd Cooper, the boy didn't miss a step and continued on. Only now, after having altered the mental connections of his instructor, does he see how destructive his actions could be. By folding to peer pressure from the interns and his innate desire to go to the casino mission, he thought only of his wishes and not the well-being of the mind he occupied. Let's do a quick recap of the themes in part 1 before proceeding. If you would like a full breakdown, the video will be linked below. The law of associative memory deals with a neural thought network that forms organically throughout the lives of each individual. Every emotion, memory, belief, and philosophical concept we attain since birth is linked together in a vast web. Our worldview is filtered through this network. The manner in which Rasputin uses mental connections involves forcibly severing the connections between these links and rearranging them, to make her associate risk with money and give her a gambling addiction. In short, altering the neural network of another and forcing them to filter their world through a different lens. In Hollis's hot streak, the player is shown the ramifications of this action. For one, the ambulance no longer has a driver, as the rational part of Hollis Forsyth is not at the wheel. Secondly, her classroom has been shattered and warped. If this room is a mental construct designed to educate the children, it has been destroyed. Her mind no longer cares about the protection and education of the interns. The same destructive technique was used by Hollis as discussed in the previous video. In both her case and the current situation, forcing one's will onto another is a bad idea. This is the first theme of the casino hospital. Bad ideas are new enemy types, and as the tagline says, they can blow up in your face. Putting their appearance and combat strategies aside, the most important detail to focus on is the red light bulbs. If the bulbs represent ideas and red the color of danger, the red bulb is simple enough to understand. By using clairvoyance on this enemy, they perceive Rasputin as a light socket. One argument could be made that when this enemy throws the explosive light bulb, it is attempting to latch it into that socket and infect Raz with this negative idea. In real life, when these thoughts pop into our head, we must filter them out before they evolve from ideas to actions. For the purpose of this video, I will be dividing bad ideas into two types, passive and active. Active bad ideas are what I just mentioned. You get a thought in your head that leads you down a path with negative consequences. Examples in-game of this is the actions we have been discussing, Hollis altering Dr. Potts' mind and Raz doing the same to Hollis. The enemies on screen can be examples of this since they are actively attempting to do harm. Conversely, passive bad ideas are different and rooted in a mental associative network that is flawed. These can present as coping mechanisms or flawed belief systems that in the long term only harm us. One example is downward social comparison. This is when individuals with low self-esteem intentionally surround themselves with people they perceive as being inferior. Doing this means that, in comparison, the individual feels better about themselves. However, as the individual trains their mind to associate their own self-worth in comparison to others, it creates a passive bad idea. Eventually, though, it will explode in their face when they come across someone who is doing better than themselves. At that time, the inferiority complex becomes worse because you trained your mind to assess your own self-worth only in relation to other people instead of individual merit. The passive bad idea in this world is when Raz associates money with risk. Her thought network now functions off this flawed premise. For the rest of Hollis's hot streak, it is symbolized by the red light bulbs found everywhere in the level design, around the roulette wheels in maternity, the palinko machines at the pharmacy, and most importantly, around the head of the Lady Lactopus. Hollis now wears a crown of bad ideas. As illustrated by these light bulbs, Hollis's mind is now flooded with passive bad ideas. Some are as a result of Rasputin's actions. Some have been a part of Hollis for a long time. At this time, the gambling addiction is the most dangerous one. If left unchecked, not only will she be consumed by it, but the mission itself will end in failure. First, we must identify and deal with it. Then the mission can proceed. The level is structured into three primary areas and a boss battle, each of which zooms in and focuses on one aspect of her. 
The method used by Raz to correct the gambling problem and each of her bad passive ideas follows the template of cognitive behavioral therapy. The theory behind this therapeutic method involves the relationship between thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Thoughts affect how we act and how we feel. Emotions affects our actions and how we think. And behavior affects how we think and how we feel. Changing one of these three will have effects on the other two. As a result of altering Hollis's thought pattern about money and risk, her emotions and behavior changed accordingly. Instead of feeling anxiety about money, she feels excitement about the prospect of winning a bet. Her actions changed from working out how to cut costs to gambling away her funding on the off chance more will come from the winnings. Cognitive behavioral therapy begins with self-analysis to determine how all of these things interact before making a conscious change to one of the three. In other words, consciously making a change to one tip of the triangle to affect the other two. Usually the easiest to change are thoughts and behaviors. One example is aversion therapy, which targets the underlying belief system. Instead of looking at gambling in a positive way, the individual forces a thought pattern which develops an aversion to the action. This influences the behavior itself, which circles around to the thought and the emotional points of the triangle. Since the story of Psychonauts involves psychics and the ability to artificially alter the associative thought network, changing thoughts and emotions is easy through use of mental connection. Think of what happens from here on forward as a form of cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, where Rasputin is making changes to the thoughts in order to influence Hollis's behavior. With that out of the way, let's dive in. The plot of Hollis's hot streak involves gaining access to the High Rollers Lounge. Only inside can Rasputin begin to fix what he messed up. But it is locked behind the requirement of having three gazillion dollars. Each of the three can be found in maternity, the pharmacy, and cardiology. By assessing and fixing each of the passive bad ideas present, Raz will get one of the gazillion dollar coins and finally get to see Hollis. Three of the six cube phases leads to these areas. Time to jump into the first. The coin here in Maternity is won through a game of roulette. Because Forsyth's mind has been altered to associate gambling with the hospital, the game of roulette is now associated with the idea of having a baby. This game is rigged, however, so anytime a player tries to conceive, it ends with double zero or a failed pregnancy. Every one of the NPCs in the area represents a different way of viewing the concept of parenthood and pregnancy. The wealthy couple wants a child only for personal gain. The flustered man does not want the child, but his wife does, so he stays quiet about the rigged game. Nurse Band-Aid keeps playing the game hoping to never win, so that the natural consequences of her sexual activity hopefully does not occur. The lost baby fears life and tries to run away before being born. And the creepy patient claims to enjoy the sounds of crying because he feels it is the only proper reaction to the horrors of life. If you're noticing a trend here, you're not wrong. Not one of the characters here are playing the game with the honest intention of having and raising a child for the right reasons. While this alone is not enough to make a definitive assertion for Hollis's opinion on children, it does raise a few questions. Are all of these fantastical voices in her head there because she truly believes it and are used as an excuse not to have children? Or are they coping mechanisms for not being able to conceive herself? Telling herself it's better off not having children in the first place because of the rhetoric voiced by these NPCs? Or is this only a twisted reflection of her mental maternity ward? Did this place look different before Ras caused her mental thought network to rewire itself? For most of these NPCs, especially the married couple, playing the game and having children is shown as only for personal gain. Since all risk has now been linked to money, the risk of pregnancy and parenthood has been associated only with personal gain. It is entirely possible these are not Hollis's true thoughts at all, but represent one end result of the passive bad idea Rasputin created. Regardless, it is now his responsibility to fix it. In the back room of the roulette wheel, the flawed mental connection is found. Defiance is linked with useless. Hollis fully accepts that the system is rigged. In the Law of Associations, the more times she experiences an example of her defiance against the system ending badly, the more it reinforces this connection. Dr. Potts stealing her work only proved to her that defying the oligarchy of the medical field was useless. 
her attempts to unrig the game by altering his mental connections also ended in failure, reinforcing the uselessness of her position. This belief remains with her even after being taken in by Truman. Luckily, Hollis does not let this passive bad idea control her. She still pushes herself to be the best she can be, but fears it is all for nothing. For most who believe defiance is useless, it can lead to a form of learned helplessness. By accepting the rigged game, their fate is a slave to the winds. Rasputin severs this connection and links effective to defiance, which serves as a reminder not to surrender to the system and, hopefully, alter her behavior. Then again, how do we know we can change things unless we try? Jumping into the pharmacy, we are brought before a series of Palenko machines. There are two primary themes in this section, bottling up your emotions and the gambling addiction itself. In the center of the room is a large Palenko machine representing Hollis herself. The goal is to get her to swallow a bitter pill and accept its truth before the gazillion dollar coin is handed out. However, the heart on the game board is blocking the stomach preventing this from happening. Because of this issue, the game cannot be won. But what constitutes winning here? For the purpose of this discussion, we should interpret the advice from the NPCs in the context of ending the addiction to gambling, each of which are examples of flawed ways to approach the issue, and none of which are helpful. The young patient believes that because he spent so much time and effort in a failed endeavor, well, he can't stop now. As a result, he is trapped in a never-ending spiral of failure from this bad idea. The old patient advises using mathematics to determine a winning strategy. However, the goal here is not to find a way to win, but to get Hollis to stop playing entirely. Becoming more effective at the problem isn't helpful. The Plinko nurse suggests making a decision based only on the colors. Again, this is making decisions using irrelevant information that has no correlation with success. Another bad idea. All of these show flawed ways at making decisions. The passive bad idea that we are trying to address in this area is Hollis's tendency to bottle up her emotions. Upon entering the back door, we see the mental connection of Hyde and feelings. She expresses a sentiment that I'm sure a lot of us have thought. Who wants to hear about our problems? I myself am guilty of this despite knowing why it is a negative way of thinking. This just goes to show that our associative network can still control our thoughts and actions despite knowing it no longer serves us in the long term. No one ever said making changes to our thought patterns was easy. While in this back room, Hollis has some dark thoughts that eventually lead to a nugget of wisdom. I can't determine what these dark thoughts are, but it is up for speculation if anyone wants to theorize in the comments. To fix the machine, Rasputin links share and feelings together. Making this subtle adjustment is important, because the next area is predicated upon allowing herself to do this. If one cannot share their feelings and insecurities, how can they ask for help? You know, I think holding down all these feelings is giving me a bit of indigestion. The door to cardiology leads Raz to a bar that is themed after horse racing. In order to attain the final gazillion dollar coin, he must bet and win on hearts. The problem is hearts always loses. After breaking into the back room, we learn that the heart has a broken leg and can't hope to win the race. She expresses that her doctor tells her to stay off the leg and let it heal, but her boss will fire her if she does not run. The doctor and the boss is Hollis herself speaking to her own heart. Even when she knows taking a break and focusing on her own mental and emotional health is the right thing to do, she won't let herself do it. The fear of losing everything she has achieved keeps her running on a broken emotional leg. Raz offers to help and run the race for the heart, but he cannot because currently the thoughts of help and losing are linked together in her associative thought network. Hollis actively refuses to accept help from anyone at this time. A few uses of mental connection later, he links help and winning instead. Now the heart will accept the help. It is important to remember that in the pharmacy, Hollis began to share her emotions. The first part of this is admitting she needs help. Now she learns to accept the help when offered. Life isn't meant to be lived like a single player game. There is no bragging rights to completing a multiplayer game solo in real life. 
By doing everything alone, Hollis was placing a handicap on herself, just like the cast on the broken heart. It is much easier to succeed working as a group instead of working alone. Then again, life is more of a relay race than a wind sprint. Sometimes you need to know when it's time to pass the baton. With all three gazillion dollar coins retrieved, Rasputin finally has access to the High Rollers Lounge. It is in here where the boss of the world finally steps into the neon lights. The Lady Lucktopus, or Lucky, is a mental construct of the gambling addiction Raz has been trying to fix. The boss design itself is the perfect summation of all the concepts presented in this video. It takes the form of an octopus partially because of the many arms. Hollis needs those extra arms to do everything herself. Doing the work of multiple people at once. All of them are her extending her tentacles of influence to multiple places instead of asking for help. A crown of bad ideas rests on her head. Tendrils from the light bulbs connect to the enslaved heart and affect her emotions. This heart rests in the head and animates the body. In other words, the bad ideas and twisted emotions directs the behavior that she is exhibiting. Defeating it involves a few steps. First, take a bad idea light bulb and have it literally blow up in her face against one of the tentacles. Then bypass another bad idea enemy which guards the head. Then dive in and sever the connection the crown of bad ideas has over her heart. After defeating it, Lucky bemoans why it is being destroyed. The source of Hollis Forsyth's anxiety was rooted in the funding and management of the Psychonauts. Lucky here was created for the sole purpose of alleviating her own anxieties. So why isn't this a good thing? Whenever an opportunity to help our negative emotions arise, we generally go for it eagerly. Unfortunately, just because the negative feelings are reduced does not mean the method of doing so was a good idea. Coping mechanisms may help us feel better in the short term, but can lead to negative consequences in the long term. For those who have finished the game, we will revisit this topic once we get to Bob Zanotto. As learned in the pharmacy area, the methods we use to solve our problems are important. It is not a good idea to solve the Psychonauts' money problems through gambling and risk bankrupting the whole organization. Instead, it is a better idea to ask for help and collaboratively determine the best possible way to solve the problem. After all the meddling Rasputin did, this is what Hollis is left with as the dust settles. But as it should be, the new intern does not get off easy. He is reprimanded and made to understand just how bad he messed up. The possibility of permanently ruining the mind of the acting head of the Psychonauts while in the middle of crisis could have caused catastrophe. The lesson he learns here is best said by the second head herself. We're not here to change people's minds, Raz. Not here to fix people. We're here to help people fight their own demons. The ones they already have. I'm sorry. This lesson should be taken to heart by every practicing therapist. It is up to them to give others the tools to fight their own battles, not to project how they believe another person should behave onto the patient. That is what Raz did and nearly ruined the mind of another. From here on forward, his approach is different as we will see in the next episode, Compton's Cook-Off. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.